when you operate in a, a, a grace with the Lord, you'll always be talking with him because that's how that grace is going to intensify is an act of humility when you're talking with the Lord. Do you know that there's things in your life sometimes is is it's been forgotten by you and in that area of your life where you forget something that God has done for you. It can create a stagnation in the more that he wants to do in that certain area. For instance, if you have a debt free car. There's many people that don't have a debt free car. So if God gives you a debt free car and days go by, weeks go by, you don't say thank you for the debt free car. You're missing out on rewards and increase in the area of cars. Because God knows that he's not going to get a celebration from you for long. It's not going to be long lived. It's only going to be for a time. The same way if God gives you a debt free house. And you thank the Lord first two days, two weeks, and then you live in that house for years and you don't thank the Lord for the house again. There's houses that are being blocked by you because of your unattentiveness to keep on giving praise. So all throughout your life, you have to keep on giving praise to God to show him that you recognize the thing that he has done for you and he can keep on ministering more to you in that same area. That area where you're not vocal about Thanksgiving is the area that could be stopped in the future. It That's the area that it, it'll be dry. So if God gives you a lot of clothes and you don't acknowledge him for the clothes, you don't praise him for the clothes, he knows that in the future, the wardrobe blessings is not necessary for you because you're not going to be excited forever. You're going to die off. So saints living in the spirit requires you to really study around you and to look at what haven't I properly communicated praise towards God for. A lot of times, even when God is sending people to help you in life, you don't praise him for that. And then there comes a time where you want somebody to help you. But yet, when someone was helping you, there was no communication of praise. The same way, in the time where God is giving you clarity and understanding about things, if you don't praise him for good understanding and praise him for thanksgiving, when the time of confusion comes, there'll be a moment where Satan will take advantage of the, uh, uh, of the fact that you didn't express praise for your clarity. You didn't express praise for being in understanding, for being in revelation, to, for being in a place that God wanted you to be and being in the alignment of his will. So then the time comes where you're not in his will and you're not in understanding and you're not in clarity and you're not in revelation. And you don't see that Satan has taken advantage of the fact that you didn't give God glory for allowing that place of clearness and understanding to enter you. You got to be more aggressive about not being self-entitled and being an expressive experience of joy and thanksgiving and gratitude towards God. Many people are always seeking more to the degree that they don't even praise God for what's present. They're constantly looking for the next season that they don't give God glory for the current happenings that's taking place. Don't live life rushed for the future because today is the best time of your life that you could ever be in. You don't want to be in tomorrow. You want to be in today because the current moment has a current of power that you could step into and you could Unlock any realm of God that you want to live in, any gift of the spirit, any uh, grace, any mindset, any angel. Whenever you operate in the spirit, you step into angelic visitation. Angels visit the life of people that are operating in thanksgiving towards God. Why I say visit, 
because some angels are not always going to come forever. They come for a time because there's something specific that they are coming to do. And once they get it done, there, there's no need for them to be there. There are some angels that come permanently. They stick by you. They stay by you even after they accomplish some things because they have a long lasting assignment with you. But angels visit your life when you handle the presence of God correctly. When you handle God's presence and you engage his presence and you are actively speaking with him and talking with him, angels take record of that. And they are sent by God to minister to you. They are sent by God to bless you, to strengthen you, and to cause victories around you. It's very important that you start to recognize what you have around you that other people don't have. Recognize what you are experiencing that other people don't experience, all the blessings, all the goodness, and start giving God thanks. Start engaging him properly with the time that you have on earth. Because saints, the truth of the matter is, many people are looking at biblical prophecies. Many people are looking at what's the timing of the coming of the Lord and when's the rapture and when is this going to happen and when is this going to happen. All of that stuff does not matter. It does not matter because the Bible even said that no man knows the time or the hour or the day. No man, no man. It, 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 so it's, this wasn't even supposed to be the focus of man. What's supposed to be the focus of man is I have time right now and let me fulfill the time that God has for me in this time. Let me redeem back the time and use it for his glory, for his excitement, for his good pleasure, for his happiness. When you receive the grace to be God's friend, you'll recognize that there are times in life where you have disconnected from him unknowingly. That's why when he starts to rebuke you and he starts to correct you, he's showing you where you got off track. Oftentimes, even things that you pray about, you don't know how the things came about. The things came about because his will wasn't even being done. So sometimes you, you, you might go to the Lord in prayer about something to fix something, but you don't even know how that thing came into existence was because it wasn't even his will happening. The thing was able to show up because his will wasn't being done. So let me just ask you, let me just show you something. Say, um, say uh, somebody's name is Felipe and they go to a bar and they, they, they meet, uh, they meet, uh, Sarah and Felipe meets Sarah and he's at the bar and, and while he's at the bar, um, he comes into a time and he starts saying, Lord, was that my wife, Sarah, that I met there? And he's praying, Lord, give me a sign to show me if Sarah was my wife. Now watch this here. God didn't even pit Felipe to be at the bar. So Felipe is praying about somebody that God never even meant to be in Felipe's story. But Felipe is spending time bringing Sarah before the Lord and asking the Lord to give him a sign about somebody that wasn't even assigned for him to ever see. And this is what happens oftentimes. Some of the prayers that you pray are wrong because the people or the things that you're praying about, those things were never supposed to happen. Those people were never supposed to be met if you were led by the Spirit. So saints, when you get led by the Spirit, the Spirit of God starts checking you on things and showing you, why are you coming to me about this? This was never even supposed to be in your knowledge. Let me give you another example. Say um, you are in a place and um, God, God didn't pitch you to attend this, uh, this uh, conference and they're talking about stem cell research and stuff like that. And you go to the Lord and you say, Lord, I pray, give me revelation about stem cell research. Lord, open my eyes to know what stem cell research is. And, and Lord, I, I, I pray for a grace that I can move in the stem cell research. It says it's going to bring a lot of money to me and stuff. And you're going to God about something. 
And the subject is stem cell research. And God never even wanted that knowledge to get to you. And now you're going to him in prayer and you're getting frustrated because you feeling like you're not connecting with God in the prayer. But you don't even catch that God is not interested in stem cell research. So while you're trying to connect with him with a subject that disinterests him, did you know that God will let you feel when he's disconnected from your prayers? Did you know that? That he will let you feel when he's not involved in the theme of your petition. You will feel the disconnect. You'll feel like it just it just hit the, the top of the, the ceiling and came right back down. You will feel disconnected. It's the same way if somebody comes up to you right now and they start talking to you about all your mistakes 10 years ago and telling you, I saw you do this and I saw you do this. You're not going to want to hear what they're saying. You know why? Because the theme of their message is condemning you. You're being reminded of all your bad decisions and they actually saw your bad decision and it's affecting you. So you don't want to keep on hearing it. You become disinterested in talking with them. Well, God has that same experience with man. If you come to the Lord about anything in this life, he will begin to speak to you and give you accuracy on how he feels about it. People miss the exact idea of God. Did you know that God could give you an idea of what he wants you to do and you could twist it and make it into what you want to do? God often gives people ideas and say, I want you to change this and change this. And they pick, I'm going to change this and I'm going to change that. I'm going to make this like this. But they don't follow what God exactly said. When God was telling Noah how to build the ark, he told him exactly what he wanted, exactly the wood, exactly the cubits, exactly the measurements. He was telling him exactly what he wanted, exactly the animals, exactly who to let in, who not to let in. There was complete clarity about God's desire. When you are friends with God, he will talk to you exactly about things. He not going to leave you in the blue. He going to talk to you exactly. And you're going to understand, even though other ideas come my way concerning this same thing, I must stick to how God said. You'll meet people that come to you and try to get you to change how God told you to do it. They tell you, you could do it like this. You could do it like this. You, you could do it like this and you got to stick by force to how the Lord told you to do it. People will suggest to you, and it seems so innocent when they suggest to you, they'll suggest to you, no, you ain't gotta do it like that. Um, I was somewhere the other day, and um, I asked for something specifically, right? And the person that I asked it from, they begin to say, do you know we have these other options, and you could get this, and you could get this. And I let them talk, and then I just hop back into what I said again. I'll get this. <laughs> I do that a lot. I do that a lot. You you got to. Because um nobody is really uh nobody really has like um they really don't be knowing what they want. So anybody could come tell you anything. You gotta know what you want. You can't let people divert you from something that God revealed to you. And, and you ain't got to be nasty to him and say, I know what God said. You ain't got to come. Just outsmart a serpent. All right. You can outsmart a serpent with the same serpent personality. You ain't got to cause no scene and you ain't got to go crazy. And you, got, you ain't got to blow a situation out of proportion. You just can let somebody talk, but still hop back into what you said. Um, you could be anywhere in life doing something. Somebody will come suggest to you. It could be somebody that work at a place. It could be somebody in a building. They tell you, you, you say, I want to go straight down here. They say, well, you could turn right right here. And, and it's better if you turn right. Thank you. And go straight. <laughs> you got to do that. Because people, they don't even recognize the voice of Satan that's in them. People do not recognize when Satan speaks through them. 
Saints, do you know that Peter's face was dumbfounded when Jesus called him Satan? Peter must have thought that Jesus was having a tough day. Because if he truly was repentant, he would have never denied Jesus later on. He would have never, he would have never fell asleep. So you know that Peter did not even acknowledge the rebuke of Jesus as divine. You're not hearing me. If Peter knew that Jesus rebuking him was a divine thing, he would have got himself straight. But when Jesus rebuked him, Peter was just thinking he's just frustrated about how things are going. He's a, he probably just upset because of how the Pharisees been coming at him. He got a lot on his plate. I understand that. It's not, oh, shoot, I got the voice of Satan in me. People don't be recognizing that. You'll be shocked if you ask people where they are mentally. You'll be shocked. Saints, do you know, in life, God will be thinking something about someone. And if you go to them and you ask them, uh, you ask them their perspective, their mindset, you'll be shocked to find out that they have no idea where God is at mentally. They don't see eye to eye with God. They don't know. They don't know him. Saints, to know Jesus, it is a precious thing. And to make you more empowered to know him, he comes down to the earth. And he lives among you. He shows up in the body of a person. And he talks with you so that you can get to know him. The easiest yoke of Jesus is his appearance to you in the physical form. Makes it easy. Makes it very easy. The easiest yoke of Jesus is he comes and talks to you in a physical body. The easiest yoke of Jesus. Psychologically, all throughout your life, you imagine how many times you thought that you was making the right decision. You was destroying yourself. You drank something. Oh, I'm giving myself energy. And you was killing yourself. You gave yourself uh, 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 something to eat and you thought, man, man, this is so healthy. And then you find out something. You know, oh man, this is, this is not right. How many times have you thought something was right and it was bad? Happens all the time. So imagine when the Lord comes and, and he, he bypasses the psychological warfare and he just shows up and teaches you in a physical form. If God would have called Peter in his brains, he would not have come. But Jesus came right there and said, follow me. I'm telling you, this is profound, man. The easy yoke of Jesus, the easiest yoke. And if God would have told Thomas in his mind to follow him, Thomas would not have followed him. But here come Jesus, say, follow me. The easy yoke. Jesus Easiest yoke is his appearance to you in the physical form, where he talks to you face to face, grace to grace, place to place. And he lets you see him. Saints, the word of God says that Jesus will send his disciples out to go get bread to go purchase bread from the marketplace. I'm not talking about the miracles of the five loaves and two fish. I'm talking about other times. There's other times in the text, in the gospels, Matthew, where he sent them out to go get bread. This wasn't a conference. This was just them living together. He sent them out to go get bread. Wait a minute. Why didn't Jesus always call down bread from heaven? I want you to hear me. There's a time and a place for the supernatural. And sometimes it is not the time and the place for manna to come from heaven. It is the time and the place to go make an exchange in a physical store with physical money, with physical people packaging your groceries. 
That's why many people miss Jesus because they're always looking for the Jesus that le kamasto no mokura. They're not acquainted with the Jesus that laughs and jokes and asks you questions. Did you hear about this happening today? They don't know about that Jesus. The Jesus that talks with you as if Jesus is a normal person. The Jesus that flirts with you. The Jesus that gives you encouragement, exhortation, edification. The Jesus that makes you feel good about yourself. Many people don't have knowledge of that Jesus. When they think about Jesus, they think about miracles. Resurrection from the dead, casting out devils, authority. You know, you don't know the Jesus that will go inside of the store and they say, everybody here, uh, you must sit down. And Jesus will sit down with everybody. The Jesus that will be inside of a vehicle and put his seatbelt on in the vehicle. Why are you putting your seatbelt on, Jesus? You're all powerful. People don't know him. Do you recognize that Jesus let people punch him in the face and he created their fists and he could have deactivated their fists with one snap, with one breath, and he doesn't deactivate their fists. He lets them punch him while they're digging the nail in his hands and they're puncturing his skin, and they're digging the nails into his hand constantly, these very nails could end up gushing the blood out of his veins, and he lets them do it and nail them to the cross. They do it for the next hand. Dagger his hand, nail it to the cross. And they're laughing at him. He could take their tonsils out of their mouth. He could take their throat, their, their lungs out of their body. He can do it supernaturally, but he lets them laugh. He lets them mock him. They, he let them beat him. They, he let them beat him. His skin being ripped off of his body and he let them beat him. People are not acquainted with that Jesus. When Peter saw them coming against Jesus, he wanted to fight. And he did fight. He cut the man's ear off because he's like, no, this is not supposed to happen. But it is supposed to happen. The easiest yoke of Jesus is when he shows up to you and talk to you. And he preaches to you. And he teaches you. And he laughs with you. And he gives you understanding. And he talks to you about things to come. And he gives you wisdom. Many people are not acquainted with that Jesus. Did you know you can read the scriptures and you can hear about Jesus and create an imagination that's completely opposite to how he is? When you really get to know Jesus, you will, you will talk to him and ask him a question and he'll ask you a question with your question. Lord, do you think I should go here? And the Lord will say, do you think you should go? Huh? And then you, you wave that out. No, 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 no. That, that's not making sense. That didn't answer my question. So let me ask again. He didn't hear me. Uh, that that, that got to be the devil trying to play tricks on my mind. Lord, do you think I should go here? I need clarity. Please show me. Do you think that you should go there? He converse with you. He converse with you. You notice in my teachings, I show you even when you have expectations for something you're not ready for. The plan that Jesus has for you, listen to me real quickly. If you don't hear nothing else, just hear this. The plan that Jesus has for you can be stopped if you don't receive the grace to handle that plan. 
Because what are you going to do in days when that plan is attacked? What are you going to do when people find out about that plan and they persecute you? What are you going to do when you are having a tough day, a tough time, a tough season, and Satan tells you that that plan is wrong? You can hinder what Jesus wants to do with you if you have not received the grace to handle it. Some things in your life is not even on Jesus right now. It's on you. Because Jesus want to do it now. But if Jesus does it now, who you are right now, you will not be integral and loyal and faithful and committed and dedicated and thankful and grateful when he does it. Some of the things in your life is being hindered by you because you have not intentionally received the grace to handle what Jesus will do. There are people that after Jesus manifests his plan in their life, they become his enemies. They become his slanderers. They become the lepers that walk away. He manifested his plan in the lepers and nine of them walked away. Only one came back and said, thank you. Only one received the grace to handle the healing of leprosy. Only one received the grace to handle the healing of leprosy. The others did not receive the grace. This is real profound. I want you to remember this. Some of the things that Jesus wants to do is not being hindered by Jesus or Satan. It's being hindered by you until you intentionally receive the grace to handle it correctly with thankfulness, with gratitude, with patience, humility, with fear of God, Lord.